Welcome to Project Sullivan. I'm Gogo. And I'm Gilbert. On this week's episode of Project Sullivan, we get a 1984 GMC Jimmy. Ooh. Yeah. Hopefully you get this thing to run. Right? Will it be fuel? Will it be spark? Will it be seized up? Or all the above? I only kind of know. Kind of know. I can tell you this is not seized up. As you'll see on this episode of Project Sullivan, You'll see in this episode of Project Solo we put blood, sweat, and tears into this 1984 Jimmy. And of course it's going to run into Chevy. Right. Or will it? Can this small block keep up its legacy? Okay. Next. Can the small block keep up its legacy? Last week on Project Sullivan, we were tasked with fixing my daughter's PC after my other daughter spilt milk on it almost two weeks early. There was visible evidence that the video card was involved, so we removed it from the equation. After a bit of trial and error diagnostics, we discovered that the PC worked, but only with the video card outside of it. So, the cleaning began after a few baths in alcohol. The lush broke loose of its debris with a little soft bristle at it. Then it was on a test to see if this baby will start. It turned out to be easier than we thought, so when Gogo challenged me to a not to laugh, I obliged. I felt the warm, but clearly looking back on it. Let's see who gets the last laugh this week. Okay. Hello, hello, and welcome to Project Sullivan. Uh, we have a 1984 Bla GMC Blazer right here with a 350 engine, I think. Yep. What size is the lift? Eight inch. Eight inches. How big are the tires? 35. Except for this one, it's more around the 15. 30 range. This has been one of the projects I've been most excited for. Uh, it ran when I parked it here, and I drove it up here two years ago. But before that, it sat for three years, where I drove it previously to park it. Before that, it sat for almost 10 years. So total, in the past 10 years, this thing's probably driven 30 minutes. Four-wheel drive. The engine is really good on this thing. It sounds really strong, if I remember correctly. About a decade or so ago, they lost the ignition switch, so I had to pull the ignition switch out, and uh, we've been, you know, ever since then, we've been starting with pliers. I didn't it see a point be. in going to get an ignition switch. I, I wasn't driving it yet. But our plan for this right now is, I bought a bunch of metal at an auction, and we want to build a bumper for this, a nice fancy bumper. Get it running and park it somewhere where it's not going to sit for 10 years. We're just going to see if we can get it running today. That's our plan. Get this beast running. I think the hood's already popped. I popped it. You got to give it the old Chevy 3 cap. There we go. We got our massive Edelbrock air cleaner that probably is full of dirt. This whole thing's full of dirt. Oh, just a little bit. Um, if you look to the sides over here, we got our headers on there already. Comes with headers. Chrome valve covers, which are probably leaking. Um, if you look over to this side, we do have a battery for it, but at least you can tell we have a New Mexico uh, battery mount on it. <laughs> it's got an Edelbrock intake on it. You can see it if you zoom in right there. Mm. What's it taste like? No. <laughs> How are you gonna know it's bad if you don't taste it? Eh. It, it smells bad. <laughs> <laughs> it's old, it's old. Hey, 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 wipe that dipstick off, put it back in, that way we can see what a reading would be look like. Well, I think they left off. Okay, hold on a second. Reading your 9000. Smells like oil. Okay. I got this uh, specially designed napkin for cleaning a dipstick. Better than what the normal uses. 
If it can stop the rona, it can fix the oil, check, check the oil. All right, pull it back out. Not bad, it's full. All right, go ahead and wipe it back off so we don't get any corona in the oil. And look, it even has a handy uh, holder here so we can, that way we don't lose it and it doesn't fly away. Glove. All right, we got our beast of a battery in here. Only thing that looks half a decent in here. For now. <laughs> think we should wait to change that radiator cap or that cap on that distributor. Where's it at? This is an oddly designed engine bay. Normally the dipstick's on this side. Positive on there. Ooh, and unlike the Ford, we we're lucky enough to uh, have a red cable for the positive <laughs> and a black cable for the negative. That Ford, oh my god. Here, hold that. That was the job. And it's still not running. Well, it ran, and then it didn't run, and then it ran, and then it didn't run. And then we gave up. And then it ran, and then it didn't run, and then we gave up. You think I should mount this down? Probably. Make sure it's properly mounted and secured. How in the hell did they do this? It's Uncle Scotty and Grandpa. The most getaway possible. So, we're going to have to mount this battery terminal, buddy. What size do you think that is? Uh, probably a 7 16 or a half inch, one of the two. Because it's just a little loose. No! You know what we forgot is the starting fluid. I say we, after we get this done, I said we just go ahead and give it a crank, see what happens. Yeah, the flyers are starting. Uh, I think I made a specially designed pipe for it. Literally, this isn't a joke. It's literally a specially designed pipe. Let me go get it. Here's our key for that bad boy. All right, just took a piece of pipe and hammered it down. You can see the hammer. Maybe I can get it in the camera where I beat it down with a hammer. So you just shove this hole. You shove the whole key in the ignition, and then you can crank it. Why do we do things around here? Right. Well, there was no point in putting a lot of money into this thing at that time. So not a lot of money. Alright. Okay, we will be back in a minute. Hold on. We will be back in a minute. I gotta go run and get some starter fluid real quick. And what else did we forget, Gogo? -Go? Move this dumb differential. Did you take... Oh. <laughs> I found a radiator cap here. And I was like, did you take this radiator cap off? But there's still a radiator cap on it. I thought Logan took the radiator cap off. Logan's not that smart. But it already has a radiator cap. 
Okay. You're wrong. It's not happening. Four seven sixteen. I'll be right back. Hopefully better. Yeah, it's a little stripped. But yeah. we may have to just try it like that. I'm gonna have to go get another bolt for it. That one's pretty good. Alright, you see that wing nut right there on top? Yeah. Go ahead and take that wing nut off. I was wondering how tight you wanted it. Go ahead and take that lid off. I know. I'm getting there. How dirty is it looking there? Hmm? It's there. Alright. Yeah, we don't need that on there. Probably a good idea. Ooh, quadrajet. Some people will call it a quadra junk. Would you call it that? I wouldn't call him a liar. <laughs> this is our this is what we got, okay? They just need to rebuild some. We're good. Alright, so. We can always upgrade it later. So, it tried to crank once. And I think we broke the shifter, or the, the ignition on the actual dash column. So we gotta go with plan B. I don't have a starter switch for this thing. Go, go. We're gonna have to make up a plan B. So, I got an idea. Okay, so what I've done is I got this old pair of jumper cables here and I'm going to send one end down in that pocket there see if I connect it to the solenoid on the starter. We'll get ourselves a little jumper box going here. Um, give me one second. got to reposition everything to pull this up. Been there. This differential is still in the way though. Can you see where my hand's at? You gotta get in there. So you can see where we're at. So, using jumper cables for their original purpose, we have it connected to the solenoid on the one side, and if I hit it against the battery here, it's gonna go. Ready? Mm -hmm. 
recording? Yep. Well, this is awesome. If you look from this angle here, you can see that our fan is hitting the fan shroud. But that's fine. We'll worry about that later. Or it'll fix itself. So let's see if I get this thing to bust off. Sounds like it's going to blow up something. That step go go try to get it from the top this time. You okay? Well, it's hot as fuck. All right. Maybe we'll let this battery cool down for a second. Because I think it moved. And now it's grounding. I'll just leave that head off real quick. That starter stuck. I'm coming. Okay. Okay, so we got a couple issues here. Uh, for one, our ground keeps getting super hot. I think we got a bad ground. We need to get that ground squared away. So that's that's step one. Step two is we gotta clean up these battery cables and get them tightened up. So we'll probably go get some materials to do that. And then after that, maybe we can have a more reliable system for uh, getting this thing to bust over. And uh, we're almost out of starter fluid, so we might have to go get ourselves some of that uh, unleaded gold nowadays. I don't know if you guys have been to the gas pumps, but it's gold now. No, no, it's platinum. Right, it's almost platinum. It's going to go to <laughs> platinum. All right, so uh, we'll see you guys as soon as we get back. Oh, wait, no, don't make fun of my hammer. Who make fun of your hammer? It's useful. Hope you enjoyed this episode of Project Sullivan. Well, we weren't quite able to get it running, but I think with a little bit more care and effort, we'll get it running by next week. Stay tuned for part two of the GMC Jimmy Project.
like, comment, and subscribe. See you here next time on Project Sullivan. Project Sullivan.